Yes, Ms Orr. Commissioner, before we move to the next case study, we wish to tender another witness statement concerning the direct sale of life insurance, this time by Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited. As we mentioned in our opening statement yesterday, Suncorp Life is a life insurance company that's part of the Suncorp Group. Between January 2013 and December 2017, another company in the Suncorp Group, Suncorp Financial Services, sold life insurance policies issued by Suncorp Life over the phone. We asked Suncorp Life to provide a witness statement about the processes and controls that it had in place to ensure the sale, that the sale of its life insurance policies by phone complied with regulatory requirements. Suncorp Life provided a witness statement of Alison Smith, dated the 27th of August 2018. Ms Smith told the Commission that in December 2017, the Financial Ombudsman Service identified a possible systemic issue relating to the distribution of life insurance policies issued by Suncorp Life over the phone. FOS identified that the systemic issue had two aspects. First, representatives of Suncorp Financial Services were providing personal advice or opinions to consumers they were not making all relevant health and lifestyle questions and they were not capturing all relevant answers accurately. And second, in the period from 2014 to June 2017, the quality assurance system used to monitor the sale of those policies by phone did not mark calls as non-compliant in circumstances where a medium or high risk operational requirement was not met. An example of an operational requirement is the requirement that the representative comply with the Suncorp Code of Conduct. Ms Smith accepted that there was misconduct and conduct that fell below community standards and expectations where representatives of Suncorp Financial Services who distributed Suncorp Life policies by phone under a general advice model provided personal financial product advice to customers. She also accepted that the failure by a representative to ask or record responses to relevant health and lifestyle questions or to observe medium or high risk operational requirements could also give rise to misconduct or conduct that fell below community standards and expectations. Commissioner, I attended the statement of Alison Smith dated the 27th of August 2018. That statement is Exhibit 6.62. Now, our next case study, Commissioner, involves Freedom Insurance, and the first witness in that case study is Mr Grant Stewart. Mr Stewart. Mr Stewart, can I ask you first whether you'd prefer to make an oath or take an affirmation? Uh, I'd make an oath. Thank you. Swear the witness, please. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Stewart. Do sit down. Is all. Mr. Stewart, could you please state your full name? Bruce Grant Stewart. Thank you. And you live at an address in Melbourne that's known to the Commission? Yes, I do. And what is your occupation, Mr Stewart? I'm a Baptist minister. Uh, and you have been issued with a summons to attend and give evidence? Yes. Do you have that summons there? I do. I tend to that summons, Commissioner. Summons to Mr Stewart is Exhibit 6.63. And you have made a statement to the Commission dated the 4th of September 2018? Yes, I have. Are the contents of that statement true and correct? They are. I tender that statement, Commissioner. That statement is Exhibit 6.64. Now, Mr Stewart, how long have you been a Baptist minister? For 35 years. Mm -hmm. And are you married, Mr Stewart? Yes. Do you have children? Three children. And how old are your children? Uh, they are 28, uh, 32 and 34. Now, the statement that you've made to the Commission relates to your youngest son. It relates to his purchase of insurance from Freedom Insurance in 2016. Is that right? Yes. Uh, how old was your son at that time? Uh, he was 26. Now, I want to ask you some questions about your son. 
Could we start uh, by you telling us about what you learnt about your son shortly after he was born? Uh, our son was born prematurely, about six weeks early, and was quite ill when he was born, had to be in intensive care for uh, three weeks, I think, altogether. Uh, about the second week, uh, he was in intensive care. We were taken aside by uh, some doctors and said they had run some tests and it looked like our son or our son had uh, trisomy 21, uh, otherwise known as Down syndrome. Uh, now, can you tell us about uh, your son in 2016 when he was uh, 26 years old? Where was your son living at that time? He was living with us at home. And did he require your assistance? He did on, uh, in a number of ways, yes. Could you explain some of those ways in which he required your assistance? Uh, our son is um, relatively high functioning uh, for his uh, syndrome, uh, but he requires a, a good amount of assistance on, uh, on general care issues, uh, on making decisions, uh, on, on living life, basically, yes. Mm. Um, uh, what would you say about your son's level of independence at that time? He uh, was somewhat independent. Uh, he was able to, to read and write, had, had reasonable literacy. Uh, he was able to um, take public transport to, to get around. Um, the things he had difficulty with were dealing with concepts, abstract things, uh, and, and needed assistance in, uh, in basic um, living and independent skills. Can you tell us about your son's education? He was, um, we were keen to see him uh, normalised as much as possible. And so uh, with the assistance of teacher aides, he went to mainstream schools from an early age until he got to year nine. And it became obvious then that um, things had got a little bit beyond him and needed some extra help. So he went to uh, a special school for his last two years of school. And how are his literacy and numeracy capabilities? Well, we think they're, they're reasonable. Um, many of his um, friends with the same uh, condition aren't able to, uh, to read and write much at all. Um, but he does require assistance in understanding what words mean. And numeracy? Uh, reasonable again, um, but ha has difficulty in understanding the relative value of numbers, for example. Mm. Yeah. In 2016, did your son manage his own finances? Somewhat, uh, in the sense he had his own debit card, um, but we had to assist with that and we are co-signatories on his account to help him manage his finances. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and how did you assist your son generally with his finances? Uh, we helped him to try and understand what things were worth and uh, so he would often call us uh, if he was out wanting to, to buy something and, and ask if that was uh, expensive or cheap or was it worth it or did he have enough funds to do this. Yeah. And how does your son cope with complex instructions or situations? He found those quite difficult and uh, we found that we had to uh, make lists if we wanted him to do more than one thing uh, time. Yeah. Mm. And how does he cope in unfamiliar settings? He finds those uh, quite difficult to manage. Now in 2016, what was your son's source of income? He was on a disability support pension. Uh, and uh, did he undertake any sort of work at that time? He had some voluntary work that he was doing, uh, but uh, not paid employment. Now, I want to ask you some questions now about the events that took place in June 2016. At that time, in June 2016, did you become aware that your son had been sold insurance by Freedom Insurance? We did become aware uh, when a letter arrived for him. Yeah. Uh, you've attached the letter that arrived uh, to your statement as Exhibit BGS1. If we could bring that up, it's FIG 0000010057. And could we bring up 
0057 and 0059. So this is the letter that your son received from Freedom Insurance, is that right, yes. Mr Stewart? Yes. Uh, and we see from the letter on the left-hand side that it recorded uh, that your son had taken out a freedom protection plan. Do you see that in the first line? I do. And that it commenced on the 8th of June 2016? Yes. And the letter annexed the document on the right-hand side, which was a certificate of membership for the freedom protection plan? Yes. And we see from that document that the Freedom Protection Plan had three components, an accidental death policy with a benefit amount of $50,000, an accidental injury policy with a benefit amount of $50,000, and the final expenses cash back policy with a benefit amount of $10,000. Yes. And then if we look back to the letter on the left-hand side, we see that it recorded uh, about halfway down the page that the fortnightly premium for the plan was $10.60, which would be deducted from the account nominated in the application, and that the first payment was due on the 20th of June, so 12 days after this letter. You see that, yes. Mr Stewart? And the letter went on to say, However, if your plan includes final expenses cover, premiums for this benefit will not be due for another 12 months as your first year of cover is free. And we saw from the certificate of membership that the plan sold to your son did include uh, final expenses cover. Yes. Now, uh, the first payment in respect of the other two parts of the policy we see from the letter um, was due 12 days later. Yes. Now, what, what did you think when your son brought this letter to your attention? I was uh, quite staggered because we had no idea that this had happened and uh, I, yeah, was flummoxed really. What did you understand had happened at this point? Uh, we didn't at that point know about how it had happened um, and so I, I questioned our son uh, about how this could have taken place and that was when he remembered talking to someone on the phone. What else, if anything, did your son tell you about what had happened? Not a lot more at that stage because um, he was quite distressed about it and uh, thought he'd done something wrong and seemed embarrassed and perplexed about the whole thing. Did you have a view on whether your son needed insurance? Uh, we didn't think he needed this kind of insurance at all, no. And why not? Uh, we already have our own insurance cover and uh, have made provision for him in our wills and including having a, a trust established for him. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and did you and your son discuss whether your son had provided any uh, debit card details in the course of this call? I asked him about that and um, he said yes, but um, he didn't know why he'd provided those details. From talking to your son, do you think your son understood uh, that he had provided those details, those debit card details, to purchase an insurance policy? No, he did not. And what did you do after you read this letter and had that discussion with your son? I um, got in touch with the insurance company. I, I rang them and um, explained the situation to him, to them and uh, asked if we could cancel the policy. Now, Freedom has provided you and the Commission uh, with a copy of a recording of your first conversation with Freedom and a transcript that it has produced of that conversation and you've annexed both of those to your statement. Yes. Uh, I want to play you an excerpt from that first telephone call that you made to Freedom, uh, which is FIG 0001 0001 0060. And if we could have the transcript on the screen, 
FIG 0001 0001 0258 and 0259 together on the screen would be helpful. Now the excerpt that I'm going to play Mr Stewart uh, starts one minute and 15 seconds into that call and will play until two minutes and 12 seconds into the call and then I'll ask you some questions. Sure. On his I'm, I'm, I'm not very happy that he was coerced and taken out of policy when he obviously doesn't know what he's doing. What he's doing, so that's what, right. So what's going on there? I mean, who, who signed him up for this policy? He signed up with us on a free funeral and cover. How did he do that? Was it a result of a phone call? Say, uh, was it from us? Yeah, it was over the phone. Um, it's probably one of the same agents from a different department in our, in our, um, in our um, team, but with a different department. Well, I'm, I'm very unhappy about this, but I think that's taking advantage of some. But how he is no that He has no intellectual disability, and they had no right to sign him up for a policy. But just saying, the agent probably didn't know at that time. Oh, surely you'd know. Uh -huh. I mean, he, he, he's got very poor speech. Now, that's... Uh an excerpt from that first call that you made to Freedom, Mr Stewart. Um, were you able to cancel your son's insurance in that call? No. Uh, the Freedom representative in that call told you that she would look into a recording of the call and then call you back. Do you recall that? Yes. And did she do that? No. And how did you find the experience of that call, Mr Stewart? Oh, extremely frustrating. I'll tender the uh, recording and transcript of that call. I'm sorry, as uh, part of the exhibit, exhibit we can treat it as tendered. Yes. Uh, now, Mr Stewart, <coughs> having been unable to cancel your son's insurance policy in that call, did you then decide to email Freedom as well? Yes, I did. And you emailed Mr Harvey Light, Freedom's head of operations, whose name was on the letter that had been sent to your son? Yes. And you've exhibited a copy of the email that you sent to Mr Light to your statement. That's Exhibit 4, RCD 0014 0044 0004. Now this is an email um, starting part way down the page just from the top, an email that you sent on the same day as the call that you made trying to cancel the policy, is that right? Yes. Um, you sent this email at 9.41 that night to Mr Light and by this email you lodged an official complaint regarding your son's uh, freedom protection plan. Yes. And you said to Mr Light in this letter that yesterday your son had received the letter that we looked at earlier and this was news to us as carers for our adult son aged 26 years. Our son has Down syndrome and has been assessed as having a moderate intellectual disability. Although he copes well with many things in life, he does not possess the capacity to discern and indeed to make informed decisions about such things as his need for life insurance. It is with considerable dismay that we learned that as a result, we believe of a phone conversation with a member of your sales staff, he had agreed to take out this policy. Not only that, but your staff managed to persuade him to give them his debit card details as well. We believe that this is unscrupulous conduct at best and that taking advantage of a person with an obvious intellectual disability for the purposes of luring them into buying one of your policies cannot be condoned. You then referred in the next paragraph to the conversation you'd had earlier that day uh, in which you'd, with a Freedom representative in which you'd tried to cancel the policy. 
and you told Mr Light that you'd also spoken with the Financial Ombudsman Service as well as um, being told to get in touch with the Consumer Action Law Centre. Yes. You then said, I am hoping that this is an honest mistake by an overzealous salesperson and that you will rectify it by cancelling this policy forthwith. So that was the email that you sent uh, to Mr Light at Freedom uh, on the 15th of June 2016. Yes, thank you. Now, did you get any response to this email from Mr Light? Uh, not that I recall. Mm -hmm. So, two days later, on the 17th of June, you and your son telephoned Freedom again? Yes. And Freedom have provided you with a recording and a transcript of that phone call and you have again annexed those to your statement? Yes. Now, that particular call was a 16 minute and 47 second call, and I want to play you three extracts from that call. If we could play FIG 0001 0001081. This is an extract that begins three minutes and 37 seconds into the call and finishes four minutes and 56 seconds into the call. And the transcript is FIG 0001 0001 0261 at 0263. Cancel. Do you know what he's actually taken out though? Do you, have, do you know what he's done? Certainly do. Okay. And he had no understanding of what he was doing. Okay. But what, I, what I'm obviously stating to you is what he's done was he took out a cover that was obviously free for the first 12 months which he's insured himself for accidental death. Well, the only company out there that offers a 12-month free cover. But he has no insured. idea of what that means. And, I'm and only going through it with you. We, obviously, we do have to listen into the call because I don't know what had happened in that call um, until we do listen into it further, which they are in the process of doing that. So once they do um, finalise that, they will get in contact. But what I'm trying to state to you is, do you know what he's actually taken out? So he might have not understand what he's ha actually taken out, but do you know what he's taken out? Like, I have what I'm a trying to copy of the paperwork here. Yeah, so what he had done was, um, he originally got called in relation to a free new insurance cover, right? Yeah. Um, now, we're the only company out there that offer a 12 month free cover to basically insure all our customers for accidental death for free for the first 12 months. So what your son had done was he took out the final expenses cover, which is to insure himself for free for the first 12 months. He's not paying anything for the final expenses cover. Right, for the first 12 months. We also understand that he has yeah. no idea of what he was taking out. Yeah, but I'm trying to explain to you, just in case you might... We just missed the last bit of that, just in case want you might want first. to keep that. So that's the first extra extract of that call. Could we um, now play the second extract uh, and bring up the transcript at 0264? This excerpt begins eight minutes and four seconds into the call and finishes nine minutes and 30 seconds into the call. And just while that's coming up, this excerpt um, relates to a part of the call after you've been put on hold. Do you recall that? And the representative appears to have gone off and discussed um, the matter with someone else and has come back to you. Yes. Okay, so we had listened into this call. So what had happened was, Obviously, we wouldn't know that he's obviously, he's got any disabilities or anything wrong with him because the call had been taken up as natural, like a normal person that would obviously take the call. Um, obviously, we wouldn't know his obviously circumstances because it wasn't stated in the call, nor did, was it any different to any other call that they would have obviously taken. Um, we are happy to terminate it due to obviously because you're phoned in and you do have a calling off period, so we are more than happy to do that for you. But, I mean, we've listened to the call, obviously, we, we wouldn't understand the circumstances. You've got to understand where we're coming from at the end of the day. Um, obviously, um, we would have phoned up. It's a normal call. Obviously, nothing was mentioned. We wouldn't know any circumstances that he would have a carer or there's anything wrong with him in that conversation. Um, uh, obviously, do, do you understand what I'm saying? 
Yeah, I understand, but yeah. I think you're treating on fairly thin ice on this one. Um, we've had legal advice on it, and um, your company may be in a spot of bother if they um, use these kind of techniques um, to sell products over the phone. But it goes for every company. Um, you got to understand where we're coming from. But I would have thought it would be fairly obvious from the conversation that he had no understanding of what he was getting himself into. Now, Mr Stewart, what did you think about what you were being told by this representative about it not being apparent to the sales representative that your son had a disability? I, I disagree. Now, can I play the final excerpt uh, from the call? and bring up the transcript at 0266. By this time you were 15 minutes and two seconds into the call and we'll play a short excerpt that ends 15 minutes and 56 seconds into the call. You are the policy owner and authorised party of policy number <laughs> wish to terminate the cover for the life insurance. Uh, well, he's the policy, his name's yeah. on the policy, do you want him to say that? Yeah, yeah. Say, so I wish to terminate the policy. I wish to terminate the date of policy. Okay, thank you. Okay, so he's no longer covered from the end of this phone call today. Okay. Okay, um, that's been terminated for you. Um, we're going to send you out a cancellation Someone, letter to 16 when he hears, colleagues. Is Sorry? How I know if he was sold this policy in the first place? Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Okay. I really, yeah, I understand. Now, uh, Mr. Stewart, can you describe the experience of participating in that telephone call? <coughs> well, yeah, I found it a very frustrating experience and um, was angry that uh, our son had to go through that. And early on in that call, you were transferred from an initial representative within Freedom to another department within Freedom. Do you recall that? I do. And the second person you spent that you spoke with, as we heard, spent some time telling you about the benefits of the products that your son had signed up to? Yes. What did you think of that? I thought that was a waste of time, to be honest. She emphasised to you multiple times that the policy was free for the first 12 months? Yes. And what did you think of that? Well, I didn't think that was the case because there were already um, some benefits that were going to be deducted mm -hmm. in some amounts. Uh, and at various points in the call you were put on hold and the person appeared to be making inquiries of someone else in the background. Do you recall that? I do. Uh, and someone appeared to have listened to the call uh, and then, as we heard, the person told you that Freedom didn't consider that there were any indications in that call that your son had a disability. Yes. Now, towards the end of that call, you asked Freedom to send you recordings of the calls in which the sale had been made to your son, didn't you? I did. I was interested to hear the conversation that he had with them. And if we bring up 0265 of the transcript, we see the exchange that you had about uh, receiving the phone calls. We see your request to receive a copy of the phone calls at the top of the page which you repeat, then the sales representative says that she'll need to speak with her manager. Yes. Uh, then there's another break with hold music. She comes back and tells you she's spoken to her manager and that you need to send an email in relation to that. Do you recall that? I do. And you told her that you'd already done that. I did. And she asked when. You explained that it was yesterday and you're then put on hold again. She comes back and explains to you that it will probably be looked at within the next two to three working days and then they'll be able to get back to you. But yeah, that's what we can do from there. We can terminate the cover as of today. Yes. Now, did you receive the recordings of those calls following this phone call? No, I did not. Now, 
by the end of this call, you had managed to terminate the insurance policy that your son had taken out? Yes, that's what I was told. And we heard the part of the call where your son said the necessary words, the necessary form of words to cancel the policy. Um, in your observation, did your son find that process difficult? He found it difficult to articulate the words, let alone understand what they meant. In your view, did he understand what was going on in this call? No. Uh, uh, what did you observe about how he responded um, to the experience of participating in this call? He was quite distressed about it. As I said, he believed he'd done something wrong and uh, was embarrassed and um, didn't know what it was that he'd done. So having got to this point where after two calls and an email you'd managed to cancel the policy, what was your view of the process that you'd had to go through to get to that point? I thought it was a, a difficult process to go through um, and I especially felt for our son having to, um, to add distress to his situation. And at around this time did you decide to contact ASIC about what had happened? I did. And you lodged an e-complaint with ASIC, is that right? Yes. And you've annexed that e-complaint as Exhibit 7 to your statement? Yes. Now, despite Freedom agreeing to cancel the insurance, did you nonetheless cancel your son's debit card? We did. I wasn't um, convinced that payments wouldn't or uh, have gone out in the meantime or, or would go out. And so I contacted uh, the bank and they said, you can't stop those payments. The only thing you can do is cancel the, the card. So that's what we did. Now, all of those events happened in the middle of 2016. And in early July this year, so about two years later, you still hadn't received the recordings that you'd requested of the sales calls from Freedom? No. Uh, did you follow up with Freedom and ask for them again at that time? I did. Now, your first communication with Freedom in July this year is exhibited to your statement as Exhibit 8, FIG 0000010198. If we could go to 0199, we see a letter that you wrote to Ms Della Hunty, the Risk and Compliance Manager at Freedom, on the 10th of July this year. Yes. In that letter, which I think is just coming up now, you asked Ms Delahunty to provide you with various materials. We need to go to 0199, there we are. You asked Ms Delahunty to provide you with various materials, including the recordings of the calls that you'd requested two years earlier. Yes. Now, on the same day that you sent this communication to Ms Delahunty, you got an email back from Ms Delahunty saying that she'd likely be in a position to get back to you the following week? Yes. Uh, again, you've exhibited that communication to your statement. Uh, did Ms Delahunty get back to you the following week? Not with the information, no. Uh, and on the 24th of July, did you send an email to Freedom following up on your request? I did. And about a week after that, on the 1st of August, you got a response from Ms Delahunty? Yes. And Ms Delahunty told you in that communication that she was aiming to provide you with a response within a few days? Yes. Now, soon after that, did you receive a letter from Mr Orton, the Chief Operating Officer of Freedom? I did. You've exhibited that letter as Exhibit 12 to your witness statement. We'll go to that, FIG 0000010236. Now, the letter from Mr Orton annexed the material that you had sought, including the audio recordings of the calls. Yes, it did. Uh, and transcripts of the calls that Freedom had created. Yes. Uh, and... The letter also annexed uh, various internal communications within Freedom regarding your complaint. Yes. 
Uh, now, if we turn to the third page of that letter on 0238, we see under the table that Mr Orton told you that it wasn't the usual practice of freedom to generate transcripts of audio recordings, but they had done that and they were providing you with those transcripts. And then two paragraphs down, Mr Orton said to you, in the course of responding to your information request, we have again very carefully reviewed the complaint you made on your son's behalf in June 2016 as to the issue of the Freedom Protection Plan to your son. We have also considered how we responded to and dealt with the complaint. After receiving your complaint on the 15th of June 2016, we immediately commenced an internal investigation into the circumstances of the issue of the Freedom Protection Plan to your son. We determined that your son's policy ought to be cancelled. And the next paragraph refers to the phone call um, in which you and your son participated in which the policy was cancelled. Yes. And then over the page at 0239, we see that Mr Orton tells you that a feature of the policy was that the first 12 months of cover were provided at no cost. Prior to completing our internal investigation, we ensured that no premiums were payable by and no amounts were in fact paid by your son. The sales agent who arranged for the Freedom Protection Plan to be issued to your son was exited from the business shortly after the sale took place. In the next paragraph, Mr Orton tells you about steps to enhance their sales processes and procedures. And in the paragraph after that, Mr Orton said, we sincerely apologise for any inconvenience or distress this may have caused you or your son. In the course of reviewing the materials, I was disturbed and disappointed to review the exchange contained in attachment 13. Now that was one of the internal freedom communications. Yes. This does not reflect the culture and behavioural standards of freedom insurance. I have personally contacted and counselled the staff involved and reiterated that conduct of this nature is unacceptable and will not be tolerated. Now, that was the letter you received from um, Mr Orton in uh, August this year. Uh, that's right, Mr Stewart. Uh, so two years after your son was sold these policies, you were given this explanation. Yes. And having reviewed that response and reviewed the materials that came with the response, what were your thoughts about the response? I um, felt disturbed at the, uh, some of the communication that was involved uh, and that, was, that you referenced before, some of the internal communication. Um, I thought that it was a long time coming, an apology for what had happened. And uh, I, I, I guess I was more disturbed at the potential um, for this kind of experience to happen to, to other uh, people in similar circumstances to our son. Do you recall any of the things that disturbed you in the internal communications? I think um, what disturbed me was um, making light of the complaint and ridiculing it in some way. Uh, do you have any recollection of how you were referred to in the internal communications in Freedom? Uh, I do. I can't remember the exact words, but they weren't complimentary. Now, did you listen to each of the um, call recordings that were provided to you? I have. Uh, so you listened to the calls in which your um, son participated, including the call in which he was sold the policies? Yes. Um, now, I want to play you parts of two of those calls. Uh, I want to play firstly the entirety of a short call that took place between a Freedom representative and your son on the 6th of June. That's FIG 0001 0001 0002 and the transcript is FIG 0001 0001 0248.
Hello there. Hi, is it possible to speak to her? Please. Uh, yes. Good stuff. Uh, just a quick call there, mate. It's calling on behalf of Freedom. How are you doing today? Are you all good? Yes. Good stuff, all right. Okay, it's literally it's just a quick call today in regards to that free funeral cover that's been made available for yourself. It's literally, it's just my job to put that in place for you today. So, uh, what I'd like to do for you, boss, I'd just like you to be aware that the call it is recorded for training and quality monitoring services, okay? Okay. Yeah. Lovely stuff, mate. Okay, so if you don't want me asking, so, um, I've got some personal information of yours at the moment. So any more information that we may collect, all handled in accordance with our privacy policy, that's available on the website, freedominsurance.com.au. Um, or I can arrange to have a copy sent to you, that's fine. If you would like to know more about how we treat your personal information, how to access or correct information, or make a complaint, just let me know. Okay? Now, if I just check here, uh, are you an Australian resident aged between 18 and 80? Are you an Australian resident aged uh. between 18 and 80? Yes, but I'm not Australian. Oh, where are you from? New Zealand? Yes. <coughs> but we're living in Australia. Okay. Um, do you have a family? Do you have any children or a girlfriend or a wife? Uh, family. Okay. Is your mother there at the moment? Uh, no. Okay, what time would she be back at home? I'm not sure. Okay, look, I'll give a call back a little later, okay? Okay. Bye right then. Now, Mr. Stewart, what did you think when you listened to that call? Uh, I was, yeah, I was disturbed at some of the um, responses fairly minimal responses that were made um, and then at the end where uh, the caller asks if his mother is at home and he says uh, no um, he said he, he hung up then and said a call back later. I, I want to play you some extracts of a longer call that took place on the 8th of June in which your son was sold the policies. And that was a call that lasted for 18 minutes and 12 seconds. And I just want to play two excerpts of that call. Uh, the first one, FIG 0001, 0001, 0003. And the transcript, FIG 0001, 0001, 0250 to 0251. 0249 being the first page of that transcript. Thank you. Okay. Does okay. that make sense? Right now, uh, like I said, a very special offer for yourself. I'm going to give it to you free for a whole year. Okay, so you can choose between four and 15,000 to leave behind for your loved ones just in case you die. So do you think 10,000 would be enough for you? I don't mind. Do you think 10 would be enough to leave behind for them? Um, yes. Beautiful. Alright, you can go up to 15, mind. Are you happy with the 10? Happy with 10. Beautiful, okay. So for you, being a 26-year-old male, for $10,000 worth of cover, it is only $6.56 a fortnight, and I'll waive of that so you don't pay a penny in your first year. All right? Okay. Beautiful. All right, lovely stuff. Now, what I'll do for you as well, in regards to this, now, as you get older, especially from the age of 75 onwards, I can provide you with a very unique cashback feature if you decided not to continue with the cover at any time after you turn 75, providing that you've held it for at least five years. And this comes with a step premium. So what it means is that if you, don't, if you end up having to cancel your cover when you get older, you won't lose the value of the premiums you've paid in. All right? Now, 
what I've quoted you on is a step premium. We also have a level premium that does not increase, that costs initially a little bit more. Okay, and it's also free for the first year. Would you like me to give you more information about that one, a quote on that option, or are you happy with the first one? Um, it, can I say both? You can say one of them. So would you prefer the first one? I explained that you get a cash back feature with that one. Uh, yes. Beautiful. All right, so look. It's a real quick and easy process to set this up. To start with, I'll confirm some details. Then I'll run through some important information with you. At the end of the call, I'll provide you with a policy reference number and our contact details. You'll then receive a welcome pack within the next five business days, all right? So, shall I go ahead and set that up for yourself? Okay. Beautiful. Okay, I just want to let you know that the Freedom Protection Plan is issued by Noble Oak Life Limited, distributed exclusively by Freedom Insurance. Also, because there are no health questions, no medicals asked for the first 12 months, the insured person is covered for accidental death only. This is known as the accidental death period. It's a standard feature of funeral policies generally. After 12 months, the insured person will be covered for death due to any cause. All right? Now, what I can do for you, I can also give you accidental death and accidental injury cover at a flat rate today. I can do it for $4.03 a fortnight. And this will provide you with an additional $50,000 cover for injuries. That's such as paralysis, burns, head traumas, loss of limbs and eyesight, speech and hearing, $5,000 cover for broken bones, and it would pay out an additional $50,000 cover for accidental death on top of any amount that you'd be entitled to receive with your final expenses cover, okay? Now, with this one, it is a lump sum benefit that pays out to 10 specific injuries as a direct result of an accident, 24-hour, 7-day-a-week coverage up until you're 90, Benefit payable will pay out 100% of the benefit amount except for broken bones, which is limited to serious fractures. It pays out 10% of the benefit amount. You can claim up to three times for a broken bone. But what I'll do, all the full definitions, the insured conditions, any exclusions or limitations which apply, I'll get them all sent out to you within the product of disclosure statement. So have a good read through. All right? So, um, okay. Have a good reason. This one would have to be paid in the next 28 days. All right, boss? Now, um, for injuries, I have quoted you on 50,000. You can go up to 200,000. Are you happy with the 50,000 that I've quoted? Yes. Yep. And then on top of this as well, you can go up to... It will automatically cover you for the same amount for accidental death. However, you can go up to 500,000. I quoted you on 50,000. Are you happy with the 50,000? Yes. Beautiful. Okay, so if I just have a little look here for yourself. What it means is that your first year's premiums would be a mere $4.03 a fortnight. After your first year, if I check here for you. So your first year's premium to be four dollars and three cents a fortnight, and then after your first year it is let's just check here for you. Ten dollars fifty nine cents. Alright, would you like to go ahead and put that additional cover in place now? Okay. Beautiful. Alright, so what I'll do, I'll get it all sent out to you. It's a Mr. I've got your all right, and then if we could play um, the second and last extract from later on in this call, which begins 11 minutes and 6 seconds into the call and ends 12 minutes and 45 seconds into the call. The transcript is 0254 and we're still in FIG 0001, 0001, 0003 is the recording. I'll get the paperwork out to you, but if no one else is named, then it will be paid to your estate. Okay, buddy? Okay. All right. 
There we go. So, look, uh, so do you have any more questions for me? Uh, no, I, I, I need you to go. All right, two minutes. I'll let you go in a moment. Okay, so do you want to go ahead and put that cover in place today? Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set it up for your first payment date, okay, which will align with when you get paid. Okay, so do you prefer fortnightly or monthly payments? Fortnightly. Okay. And do you get paid on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday? Is there a preferred date? Um, Friday. Okay, so we'll go with a Monday then to make sure that something's there. And that's the 20th of the 6th, 2017 next year. And 20th of the 6th, 2016 this year, okay? Now, last bit of information from you. I'm going to set it up via a direct debit with your bank, okay? Now, so there's no paperwork for you to fill in. What is your BSB number with your bank? I don't know. Okay, who do you bank with at the moment? Hey. Okay, and when does your card expire? Now, uh, I've played you only two relatively short extracts from that lengthy call that, as I indicated, went for 18 minutes, Mr Stewart. You listened to the entirety of the call yes. and you read the entirety of the transcript. Yes. What did you think after you had done that? I was, yeah, quite disturbed by the whole process because I really didn't think during the call that um, our son indicated any understanding of what he was signing up for or why the information was wanted. He was being compliant and trying to be polite um, but didn't understand. And do you think it would have been apparent to the person on the other end of the phone that your son had an intellectual disability or that he was otherwise struggling to understand the questions he was being asked? Well, I would have thought so. Mm. Um, do you think your son understood the purpose of this phone call? No. Do you think he understood what he was committing to in this phone call? Not at all. Do you think he understood what he was providing his direct uh, debit card details for? No, and to our knowledge that's the only time he's done that. And what observations do you have about the way that the sales representative conducted the call with your son? I just thought he had a script in front of him and he was asking the questions that needed to be asked till he got the answers that he wanted. Do you think that the call was conducted in a way that was fair to your son? No. And having listened to the call, what did you then think about the position that had been taken by the Freedom representative you spoke to in 2016, who told you that it wasn't apparent in that call that your son had a disability? I wondered whether they'd actually listened to the call, to be honest. What has the impact of all of this been on your son, Mr Stewart? He, uh, he became quite apprehensive about answering his phone um, and even though we'd put his number on the do not call register, he continued to get phone calls from we don't know who, but he no longer would answer his phone to anyone whose number he didn't know. Does your son know that you're giving evidence in the Royal Commission today? He does. Uh, and what does he think about that? He, he thinks it's about those calls that I used to get. Yeah. Uh, and why have you decided to come along and give evidence in the Royal Commission, Mr Stewart? I was, I was disturbed at this process uh, and was concerned that others would be targeted in similar situations to him and perhaps others who didn't have the support that he has to, to challenge this kind of process. Thank you, Mr Stewart. I have no further questions. Thank you, Mr Stewart. Mr Silver. Thank you very much, Mr Stewart. You may step down.